This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This uh, video is on geologic joints and how joints are created in rocks. What are joints? Uh, we're going to look and discuss the different levels of the uh, the rocks breaking and look at the different types of joints that we find around the planet on our surface. Now, uh, this is a cool topic because this kind of like links into weathering, erosion, it links into different landforms and geomorphology. It can also link into time uh, in terms of geology and geology time and how we measure time based on and the breakdown of rocks and where they come from. So joints uh, are a pretty uh, influential topic that kind of like is the glue to a lot of the, uh, the subjects and themes in geology. Let's begin. So what are joints? Joints are pretty much the the line or area or point of weakness in the material, so different rock types and formations, whereby it has been broken. There is a broken uh, section. There is an obvious and or even visible visible um, break. Now, there are different uh, levels of joints, but pretty much that is the most simplest explanation is there is a break in the rock. Now, you can see over here on this uh, beautiful left-hand picture, uh, these, these lines going through the rock, either going straight down or horizontally around. But these are fractures. These are breaks. These are joints within the rock. Now, how does it define a joint? So I'll put joint right here, which is the continued break through the rock or a rock. But there is a part before, so we'll put here fracture. So the fracture is the initial smaller in size, smaller break that occurs first. Now, rocks are pretty solid by their nature, composition, and um, by density. So how do we break these rocks? Well, we've got to discuss something very cool, which is called deformation. To deform the rock, to change its shape, to, to move it. So deformation happens in three ways. One, there is elastic deformation. There is ductile. And there is brittle. And I do videos on each one, more detail when it comes to seismology and, and earthquakes, so it ties in nicely with that. So elastic is where you can bend it and it comes back to its original shape, like a, a, a plastic ruler or an elastic band. Uh, ductile is where you bend it and it stays bent, um, like a, a straw, you know, drinking straw, maybe. Uh, and brittle is where you bend it and rather than it come out, come out of shape or rather than get stay bent, it actually breaks um, based on density and the uh, the sheer um, and bulk modulus, how much energy or stress can be applied to that material before it breaks, which is brittle. So rocks can be ductile, rocks can be elastic in certain situations, but most rocks are brittle based on the temperature and the composition. So they're brittle, so they're going to break eventually after stress. Now the stress can be applied, you know, regionally or, or widespread by tectonics and the movement of the crust and the plates. Uh, or it can be a simple, um, you know, uplift or even as simple as erosion, leaving rocks exposed to the elements can add stress both tensional stress and compressional stress. Okay, so even though rocks are solid and seem very hard, you know, humans find it hard to break rock, we need to use machines and tools to break rocks generally, to shape them, to move them. They're very hard. They do break under the forces of nature uh, through deformation, stress, and different um, causes. So fractures the first one, all right? Then you get the joint. Okay, which is an elongated, it's elongated fracture. So it's going further through the rock and usually it's connecting various fractures uh, to make one joint. Now, 
if a joint continues and adds multiple multiple joints together, then we call this a joint set. And that's the next level. That's the next. So it's larger and larger. Again, the rocks are getting more and more um, unstable based on the amount of joints there are in it. So then we get last one. We get again. We join up all these sets. Then we get what's called a joint system, which is the largest kind of variability of this. So we're starting to fracture and working through, getting more and more breaks in the rock that are connected, and we get eventually a joint system. So the rocks can be very unstable at this point, and then easier to erode, easier to chemically and mechanically uh, weather. So now we get into types of joints. Now there are various joints. There's one that's called an exfoliation joint, which is usually parallel to the ground and allows for basically the peeling off or sheeting of mostly granitic rocks that are exposed or even domes in some case like half dome and Yosemite to peel off and you get these like long slabs of granite kind of like falling off the rock. Next one would be the mural joint, which if I just draw a nice little a bit of rock right here then the mural is going to have these like patterns of like cubic joints that extend in 3ds in the three vectors across the rock and you get this like pattern created all on the rock where these joints are both vertical and horizontal and this would be an example of a good uh, joint system next we can do a sheet joint which is a cool one where you get this like uh, concave kind of like uh, rock formation, different layers and bedding and strata. And these joints are kind of like spaced out at certain distances and they kind of like run vertically throughout the, uh, the rock layer and they can create uh, areas where you can have uh, the pores and the uh, spaces. We have the, uh, the water can influx. You have the salt intrusion and wedging which is part of uh, a nice uh, mechanical weathering, which is going to act on it. It can also include the chemical weathering with the uh, inf uh, influence or influx of the, uh, the hydrolysis and carbonation maybe as well in terms of that. Um, depends on the rock type. If it's more of a limestone, then definitely carbonation would be uh, discussed. Uh, some stronger rocks, maybe igneous, would be hydrolysis with the granite and the feldspar. So sheet joints are cool and more horizontal uh, lines of rocks with the joints. Now, next one would be my personal favorite. Okay, uh, columnar of, uh, joints, which we see classically with the hexagonal joints. There we go, and then one there and one right here okay so these kind of long vertical columns usually in basalt you see this and what happens is uh, this would be the fast cooling fast cooling area towards the surface and as you go deeper down it's a slower cooling process and as they cool they form into these hexagonal kind of prismatic uh, columns and they form and shape and as they shape into this into this uh, design they actually separate and form these big long tall columns some could be meters high and then down below they kind of like all attach because it's a slower cooling process and they haven't had a chance to separate yet so these columns are a beautiful arrangement and really you think they're done by humans in some kind of like modern art display but really they're just nature's beauty working at its best then you got master folding, which occurs uh, with sedimentary and a lot of limestone formations. And basically, this is you know in between the weak areas of the limestone, usually the shells. Okay, and you get these long horizontal joints uh, that kind of continue throughout the, the entire bedding 
of the limestone. Then we have master. Then we get the last one kind of is the shear, the shear folding or joints. So to do with uh, tectonic folding and large compressional stresses. So looking at the uh, sature zone in various um, convergent plate boundaries, but plate boundaries right there, where you'll have these long um, kind of like angular joints that are being created because of the shear, the, the shear with the very large amounts of stress applied uh, during compressional or uh, convergent plate boundaries. For example, in the Himalayas and the Himalayan uh, orogeny, you've got these very large joints which uh, can um, turn into fault lines if there is movement either either side. So in review, you're looking at rock deformation between the different ways it can uh, break rock. Once you break the rock, it's called a fracture, and joints are simply larger fractures that are connected and they're breaks in the rock. And you can get different uh, levels of joints and joints uh, sets and joint systems based on the severity of the joints throughout the rock. And you can get different types based on the rock geology and the extensive nature of the joints based on location. And, and this is based on the stress that is applied to the rocks. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, check out more videos on our channel. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.